Okay, the second part of the video. Now that we've defined some important terms, domain, reign, what a range, and what a relation is, we're going to try to understand the difference between a relation and a function. Now, I'd like us to look at two relations. Relation 1 on the left, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, which I also graphed out, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and relation number 2. The only difference between relation 1 and 2 is the x value of, or the domain value here of this third item. This third item in our, in our relation. However, that one difference is what separates the one function from the other. One of these two is a function and one is not. For a relation to be a function, every x value must have its own different y value. So let's look if that's true. The x value of 0 has a y value of 1. An x value of 1 has a y value of 2. An x value of 2 has a y value of 4. Each element in the domain, each x value, has its own y value. However, over here, things start out 0. The, the x value of 0 has a y value of 1. The x value of 1 has a y value of 2. Everything is looking okay until we get to these last two. Here we have an x value of 1 with a y of 2 and an x value of 1 with a y of 4. As you can see, these are our two trouble points. This here is not a function because in a function, every x value, in this case 1, must have a unique y value. That's not true here. Here we have an x value of 1 with a y of 4 and a y of 2. So an easy way to identify whether something is a function or not, um, when you're looking at pairs of, of points or pairs of, of objects, is as soon as you see an x value repeat, Notice we have an x of 1 and an x of 1. Trouble, right? Because that means, hey, does this x value of 1 point to two different things? If it does, it's not a function. And one, one way to do a test of, about functions is called the vertical line test. And all that is saying is if you draw a vertical line anywhere, and if it hits your relation more than once, notice this vertical line for the same relation we're talking about hits here and hits there. Not a function. It's just a different way of articulating the following fact. In a function, the domain must have unique ranges. The x values must have unique y values. That is not true here. Okay, let's look at another pair of relations and try to classify them as functions or, um, or just regular old relations that are not functions. <clears throat> okay, Rem just to repeat, for a relation to be a function, every element in the domain, every x value, must have a different or a unique y value. Right? That was the problem here. We did not have unique y values. We did not have unique range values for our x or domain values. So let's look at uh, these one by one. Does each domain or x value have a unique y value in this? Well, we have a uh, x of 1 or a domain of 1, it goes to b. Do you see any other 1s on the domain? Nope. So, so far it looks pretty good. We have a domain or an x value of 5 that goes to a. Are there any other 5s? Nope. 8 goes to b. No, there are no other 8s. And this, this one starts the same way. 1 goes to b and there's no other 1, so 1 looks good. Then we run into trouble at 5. If you look at 5, the 5 here goes to both a and b. So that means that this is not a function. On the left, we're good. We do indeed have a function. Actually, let me, t 
like typed it out here for you. This on the left is a function. However, here is our problem. The five repeats, and it goes to two different y values, not a function, just a regular old relation. And often you see relations like the ones we just looked at shown in arrow charts. So if you took these two relations and put them in an arrow chart, you would see this same concept just in a different way. Again, the problem here is that 5 in our domain goes to two different y values. So if you look at this domain range arrow chart, you notice each element in the domain 1, 5, and 8 goes to a unique y or range value. However, 5 in our domain goes to two different range values. Again, not a function because the domain does not have unique values in the range. And to end with a real world example of domain and range and why some, why a, a, a real world <coughs> pairing wouldn't be a function, let's look at this. Let's imagine that our domain is made up of two teachers, Mr. Gino, Mrs. Lopez, and a whole bunch of students. And your set would look something like Mr. Gino, comma, Amy, right? Mr. Gino has a student named Amy, Mr. Gino has a student named Jenny, and others, and so on and so forth. As you can see, Mr. Gino in the domain does not ha go to unique range values, so this is not a function. So whenever you're looking at an arrow chart, if you notice that one of the domains goes to two different range elements, not a function. All right, so this is just a brief, this is the end of our first brief introduction to functions and relations in math. Our next set of tutorials will look at things like the inverse of a function, one-to-one -one functions, and some other types of things that people tend to study when they first learn about functions and relations in math.